Address Resolution Protocol, also known as ARP. Uh, it's used quite a bit in everyday communications over Ethernet. Uh, it's something that uh, you definitely want to learn how it operates. So we've mentioned ARP already. Uh, I've, I've briefly mentioned it, and we've seen some frames uh, that have had ARP in it. So what ARP does is it helps a node determine the MAC address of the next device on an Ethernet link. So why would I need to do that? So let's say I'm on some sort of host and I'm trying to get to something out there on the Internet. Let's say I'm trying to get to Google as I often reference. So I'm trying to get to Google. In between there is my router. So my router is connected up to these two. Uh, when I try to send traffic to this, I know its IP address, so in layer 3 I'm going to have my source and destination. Source is going to be me. My destination is going to be the internet. But then on layer 2, my source is going to be whatever my MAC is. Whatever that MAC is and uh, my destination is going to be I don't know that's the problem so that's where it, what ARP helps to solve because I need on layer 2 to use the MAC address of that interface on the router so it's coming from here and it's going to here layer 2 remember so that's on the local connection that's the physical connection layer 3 is going to stay the same but layer 2 I have a source, but maybe I don't know my, my router's MAC yet. So ARP, will what, will what it'll do is send out a request asking for that MAC. So how do I know to get his MAC? So we've looked at my routing table. Let's open up a prompt. I'm trying to get to 8.8.8.8. .8 I don't have a route for that address in my table. Remember we were talking about the gateway of last resort? So my traffic has to go to my default gateway, 77.1. So what I'm going to do is find out the MAC address on my link for this IP. I need to find out how to get to him on my local link. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send an ARP request to say, hey, who out there knows the MAC address for 77.1? Hopefully that'll, be get, that'll get responded to me, and then I'll be able to fill out the rest of my layer 2 frame with whatever the MAC address is of that device. Then I can put it out onto the wire here and then we'll work our way across, we'll send our traffic, and then the next device will do that over and over again. So ARP helps us determine what that uh, what that MAC address is. So let's do an example of that. Let's open up just the old Wireshark. I'm going to start that up. You can see a bunch of traffic. On Windows machines, you can run this command, which will reset your ARP cache. Whoops, there we go. There we go. That'll reset your ARP cache. Uh, what this does is on a local system, which is what I'm using for the example, uh, on a system, you have a local ARP cache. So if we do ARP A, that will show us all of our currently known MAC addresses uh, that are locally stored in my system because the reason for this is every time I send a frame and that could be look at all the ones that are scrolling behind the window here we're up to 250 300 400 frames easily that are on this link within a few seconds if you had to do an ARP request every single time for every single frame that would just flood your network it would it's just not efficient it's not you just can't do it so the local cache is used. What you do is you, you do one ARP request, you find out what that address is, and then you'll leave it in here in your local cache for a certain period of time. And then you'll, you'll leave it in there until either you reboot or a certain number of hours or minutes or something like that depending on, on your operating system. So that way you can always reference your local cache and fill out your layer 2 destination address properly without having to go bother the network time and time again with all this traffic. So what we have to do is, since I already know my address, if I try to uh, show that here, it's it's going to check my local cache first, and not, it's not going to show my ARP request. So 
on Windows systems here, we can clear that ARP, uh, ARP cache with this if you do it in an um, administrator prompt. So if we take a look, I just stopped the capture. There it is. Actually, it should be up here a little bit. There it is. It was this one. So I was already sending or receiving traffic. I didn't even have to open up a browser window. Uh, there was already so much traffic going back and forth that it, I needed to talk to my default gateway anyway. Uh, so in order to do that, I had to find out his MAC address exactly as we were describing. So what happened was my motherboard has a network interface card, and that network interface card is this ASROC. And the ASROC sent out a broadcast, all FFF. It sent out a broadcast to the entire local link on my local network saying, who has the MAC address for 77.1? I need to know. Please tell me at 77.151. So then that went out to everybody, and then whoever knew, whoever has that uh, that IP address would then respond. So then my action tech here, my uh, my home router, responded back and said, "Yep, that's me. Uh, this is the MAC address for 77.1." And then it sent that back as a unicast frame back to me. So if you had to do that every single time for all these hundreds of frames, you'd be broadcasting all over the place and you'd be spewing frames to all your other devices unnecessarily. So that's why we have that cache. Uh, and this ARP works on this broadcast uh, idea. So that's why as we go forward with designing networks, this is also why switches are uh, and are convenient when you start getting into VLANs is because you can reduce your, uh, your broadcast storm range, your broadcast uh, areas, by making smaller subnets, you reduce the amount of broadcast traffic. And this is a good example of broadcast traffic is ARP requests. So here, that was an ARP request. This is a good example of that. Uh, so that's really what ARP does on a Cisco router. Uh, you can show your ARP by doing pretty much show IP ARP, which we're going to be getting into soon. So that when we're on our uh, switches or routers, uh, if you do show IP ARP, that'll show your local ARP table on a Cisco device. Uh, there's also a reverse ARP. So if I, n let's say I already have the MAC address, but I don't know the IP address, I can do a reverse ARP and do the same thing basically and say, hey, uh, I have this MAC, but I don't know, I don't know the layer three information, just help me out. And then we'll get the response for that as well. Uh, it's also used for further protocols and needs on top of that. Uh, it, unfortunately with ARP, because it's an older protocol, it's easy to spoof ARP replies uh, called ARP poisoning. You can also override um, other people's tables. If I had a certain piece of software on my computer here, I could spew out to the entire network saying, hey, if you're trying to get to 77.1, come talk to me. And then I could work as a middleman and sniff everyone's data. Um, you know, there's there's security concerns around ARP in that fashion, but you'd have to be local to the network to do that. Uh, so that's something to think about. So again, switches, they reduce our collision domains and will also help us with uh, broadcast traffic if you start using VLANs, which we'll be getting into. So going from here, we're going to be uh, moving into switches and we'll start talking about types of switches and uh, getting into configuring switches and such and, and move on from there.